Hi class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in this video, what we're gonna see is another example of integration by parts. In this particular problem though, we have an exponential, that's good news, but we also have it paired up with a trig function cosine x. All right, no biggie in the beginning here at least, but you're gonna see we're actually gonna need to do integration by parts a couple of times, just like in the last example. And then there's one more little tricky thing that's gonna come up that I want you to just be open-minded to. I tend to call this the loopy problem and you'll see why, because there's actually gonna be a looping thing that kind of happens that we have to just mitigate and take care of. All right, so I'm gonna start this problem just like all the others and I'm gonna match up the first function e to the x is going to be designated as my u, cosine x will be designated as my v prime. So we'll just kind of notate all of that here. We've got u is equal to e to the x, such that u prime, well, is equal to e to the x. This right here is part of the issue. The fact that every time I still take the derivative of e to the x, I still get e to the x, which we love, just in this problem, it's gonna be a little bit of an issue. We'll take care of it, no, no worries. Um, we also have our V prime, which is our cosine X, but now we need to figure out what the antiderivative of, the integral of that cosine X. Well, we know that comes from a sine X, and uh, we should check ourselves and say, is the derivative of sine X really cosine X? Yes, it is, so we're all good with our signs. Okay. So if we continue on with our problem here, I'm gonna handle this one a little bit differently. Um, I actually want to rewrite this e uh, expression again. I'm gonna call this the uh, integral, again, e to the x, cosine x dx. And uh, of course that will be equal to, continuing on with our structure, our u times our v, so that's e to the x times sine x, so we have e to the x times sine x, but then we need to subtract off the integral of u prime v, so u prime times v, so that's e to the x times our sine x dx. Okay, now you might be saying to yourself, hey look, these kind of match, but no they don't because this is just e to the x sine x, this is subtracting off the integral, the antiderivative of e to the x sine x. Okay, well, if you just kind of compare and contrast for the moment, e to the x sine x is not too far different from what I actually started with, e to the x cosine x. Okay, we'll deal with that in just a second, but right here, my only option is to do by parts again. All right, go back to my scratch work here. I'm gonna let the e to the x be u, so I have u is equal to e to the x, u prime, of course, still e to the x. I will also let my v prime be sine x, so v prime is sine of x. Now I need to find the antiderivative of sine x. We've seen this a few times already come up in our video examples. The antiderivative of sine x will be negative cosine x. And of course, as always, you just double check yourself. If you took the derivative of negative cosine x, do you get positive sine x? And yes, we do. And then now we continue on. I'm gonna use this information when I get here to this integral piece, but let's rewrite all the stuff that comes before it, starting with the left side of the equation. So I'm just gonna copy this again. So the integral of e to the x, cosine x dx will be equal to e to the x sine x minus, now here, I'm gonna put this in brackets because this is our by parts round two, and I now have these u's and v's and u primes and v primes to structure here in two components. So I need to make sure I have a bracket around them. So according to the formula, I'm gonna multiply the u times the v, so that's e to the x times negative cosine x. So we'll put that in front. So we have negative e to the x cosine x. And then we will subtract off the integral of u prime times v. So here's my u prime times that v, e to the x times a negative cosine x. So e to the x times, let's actually 
put this in parentheses here, cosine x dx. And then of course we have an end bracket after all of that. All right, so a few things that we can simplify. We could go ahead and drop the brackets, distribute my negative here. We also have a negative on the inside of that integrand that could get pulled out over here. Tracking all these negatives is really a huge booby trap for many students. You gotta be very careful with that. So let's just clean up all that we can and then take inventory of what we have left. So I will write this again on the left side, integral of e to the x cosine x dx is equal to e to the x sine x. Let's go ahead and distribute. This becomes plus e to the x cosine x. I will distribute here again. These two negatives are a positive, but I'm gonna simultaneously pull that negative back out of the integrand, which keeps it negative. So now I have a negative integral e to the x cosine x dx. Okay, so at least I cleaned up all my negative signs. I've dropped the brackets legally. Okay, now let's take inventory of what we have. So here's the interesting thing, and this is the reason why I call this the loopy problem, is because you might be thinking, well, to find that integral, I would just continue on, maybe another by parts. And I get in this infinite loop, really, if I didn't recognize this one thing here that I could actually do. And that is, I see on the left side, I have the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. I see way down here, I have another one of those, but it's on the right side of the equal sign. Well, what I can do at this point is I can just add to both sides this whole thing. So I will add the integral of e to the x cosine x dx here. And then of course, do the same on the left side, the integral of e to the x cosine x dx here. So it's no more uh, appearing on the right-hand side of this equation. Instead, I have two now of these integrals, e to the x cosine x dx. So we can write that as two integral of e to the x cosine x dx. And of course, that's equal to what we have left over on the right-hand side, e to the x sine x plus an e to the x cosine x. And now you might be saying, well, like, where do we go from here? Well, at this stage, note that my problem was to find just one integral of e to the x cosine x dx. I have two of them over here. So to finish this off, I need to figure out how to get rid of that too. Well, since I'm multiplying two by this integral, let's divide by the two. So if I divide both sides by the two right here, I now just have what I started with, which was the integral e to the x cosine x dx. And now that's equal to this fraction here, which I'll just rewrite in its exact form. Why not? e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x, all divided by two. And just like all other antiderivatives um, that are indefinite, come from indefinite integrals, we have to add our C here at the end. All right, so this is one of those very interesting problems where not only did we have to do the by parts process twice within this particular problem, but there came a point in time where I get an integral that was exactly what I started with. When you notice that, stop your actual by parts processes and instead think about carrying that over to the other side and collecting like terms, which the term happens to be an integral e to the x cosine x dx, add those terms and then go from there to try to um, solve just for one of those integrals for e to the x cosine x dx, which is what we had started with, and then you'd be done. This is your way out of that infinite loop, if you will, okay? So I hope you enjoyed that example um, of a loopy problem for the integration by parts. In the next video, we'll look at yet another example, but this time it will actually have the values on your integral for a definite integral, so you can see the little difference there. Don't forget to click on the Advantage logo at the bottom to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.